Model A's that's gonna spin the tires for days. Do you like small block Chevys that can take a load that's heavies? That one didn't work. Do you like hot rods and lazy dogs? And it wasn't a good rhyme neither. Do you like silly YouTube videos? That's what I should be asking. All right, guys, we are back on the Model A. I am fired up today, and we are making progress on Model A assembly, hopefully, in this video. Where are we? Here we are in the shop. That's where we're at. Look around. Where are we on the Model A build? Well, this last week was paint and body week where we got the firewall fender wheels all color matched, just looking awesome. The bottom side, we used this N1 coating on that, color matched it. Uh, I did not know that stuff is USA made. Uh, so Sweet Patina, they make that stuff. It's also supposed to be like three times more UV resistant than the competitors. I wish I would have known that to tell y'all last week. So when you buy that stuff, you're supporting a uh, Texas family and then whatever families manufacture it here in the US. Awesome, awesome thing to do there. Uh, so we got all that laid down. We got the chassis and all of those parts uh, delivered to the blaster where it's being blasted and painted. I think we're actually gonna pick it up this evening and it's supposed to rain later on, allegedly. Hmm, don't look like no rain to me. Honk, I hear the geese. Honk, honk. Oh, there they are. I told you I called them in. So we're gonna have to see if that old Model A frame fits in the van. We'll load that baby down and get all that here. And then we're just gonna start thrashing. It's assembly time, April 19th and 20th. Uh, me, Slick 50, uh, Mortsky, Sweet Patina, Ballin' Brothers, all kinds of folks are gonna be at the Lone Star Roundup in Austin, Texas. Be sure to come see us there. And this car's not gonna be running or driving, but I'm trying to have it a really complete roller. Uh, so we're gonna get started today with pulling our old uh, small block Chevy out the crate. One of us is gonna be working anyhow. The other one is spoiled already. Hey, just like get to work, Dad. I need more treats. Ah! 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 Give her a little dur durability test there, a little tappy tappy. Oh, swing and a miss. They really uh, glued this sucker together. Luckily for me, I have a quick access tool. <laughs> Lock and load, baby. Carpenter, baby. <laughs> Gotta get a picture for the Instagram. Hey girl, smile. best part's gonna be when I go to take them a core back for this and I just set that right back on top and I duct tape the corners. Zip ties, bands, wood, that's all I don't care. Ooh, fire cell technology inside. Huh. Disgusting. Chrome valve cover say it ain't so. If that's on there, you know what that means up here, right? Yeah, she's got the chrome jobber on the front. Oh boy, howdy. So, here's what you get. You get some instructions. Mm, none of those matter. Got you a bushin. Now this is important. You gotta add the ZDDP, AKA zinc oil additive, or we'll be putting another motor in this baby. All right. So here she is, crate tree fitty, straight from the O'Reilly's. Uh, exact same thing we had ordered and put in the wagon. I'm happy with the wagon so far. Uh, underneath my account, these things are cheap enough. We can't rebuild one for this price. Uh, so just for a, it's not a big horsepower deal, guys. If y'all was thinking hot rod, like we're gonna try to really build something fast. She's more of a cruiser with the traditional hot rod look. Uh, I like reliable and just this with that 700 R4 is gonna be reliable. Let's figure out how we're gonna get her up out of here. <laughs> right out here, we got the old cherry picker. She ain't got a ram on her, but that's okay. Now, luckily I stored this down on our concrete where when we needed it, we can easily just roll it into our shop. Yeah. She rolls so good. Oh! 
I shoved it with such confidence. All right, you want to play? You want to play difficult? We'll play this difficult. Be careful of these things. Everything on them just flops and pinches you. You know how your luck goes, like I kind of know how my luck goes. You may want to move your painted fenders so they're not by the thing that keeps falling over. Not today, Satan! Oh yeah. Guess I got you a little upgrade last time I was out at the freighter. Guys, new ram. This one's got the manual pumper and air over hydraulic, so we can hook her up to the air hose. There she is, fancy. Here's your one chance, fancy. Don't let me down. All right, let's get this baby slapped on. Yeah. Uh oh, someone faced that the wrong way, dummy. That old rod hanging out a little bit. Try to cover up our uh, ports here, intake ports, and you know, that surface is a little oily, so our tape ain't exactly sticking. Did real good solid work there. Be careful, you don't want to scratch these beautiful chrome valve covers right here. Guess we're about to find out if this thing's actually screwed in here or just sitting in there. Oh, we got lift off. Feel like I'm in grease lightning. Got that motor automatic. Uh, uh, hip thrust, hip thrust. Cut at Moonwalker back. People said we should have named him Michael because he's got his one white glove on right there. Y'all said Rupert. I let the kids name him. All right, here she is floating up in the sky. We got the old remanufactured tree fitty. Everything looks nice other than the, the chrome accessories. Now over here, we need that right there. No, she's all there. Well, back a subscriber had sent this out to me. He was trying to get the 283 off the ground. Little did he know, he'd be helping us out for the old Model A engine. Do you know how to put one of these together? That's good when your clip is uh, not spring material, so once you uh, spread her out, she just stays spread. Don't even spring back. That one worked, but I don't trust you. Mine aren't any better. Well, I reckon it'll hold our, well, the worst thing that'll happen is we lose a wheel and uh, just drop our motor. Coming down. Here we go, here we go. We have uh, pressure off. Come on, this is Houston. We have chain released. Dying. Looking flashy with some chrome and a powder coated uh, stand. <laughs> squeaky, 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 squeaky. 
Got the new tires or some new tires put on the travel all yesterday. Trying to put some miles on this rig before we drive her down to Austin. Uh, now, all that being said, I need a torque wrench. I've been doing without for years now. Always borrowing Uncle Rick's or Slick's or somebody's. And I just want to run out to the Harbor Freight and get us some. We need it for our little project here. All right, we made it over here. Uh, got our parts or our tools back there. And I had two gentlemen, two separate gentlemen. Uh, I went in the Harbor Freight and a guy found me and said he had one of these just like this. And then I walked out in the parking lot and another guy had one exactly like this. So I'd say in our small town, that's pretty good odds. I'd go buy a lottery ticket or something because that's pretty lucky for them guys to have one exactly like mine. Maybe it's a sign. Now if I bought a lottery ticket, it'd probably be just like everyone else's, a bunch of losing tickets. <laughs> Your ticket's a loser. I got one just like it. Back from her haul, someone's trying to run off now. Uh, and me and Theo did take the van to get it measured for stickers. Now, if it's okay with the dog and all of her side quest, I'd like to get some progress made on the motor here. Right here, we got the old Elderbrock Performer EPS. She's made in the USA. Why did I go with this intake? Uh, because it was the cheapest for the most part. Now I know some of y'all were hoping we're gonna run that uh, three do setup, but that may be something we entertain down the road. But for now, uh, we're gonna get our motor broke in and everything with a four barrel. And baby's pretty textured. Uh, so we probably just degrease that and it'll be ready for some paint. Electric thinner is pretty good at breaking down anything and everything. We'll start with taking us some lacquer thinner and wiping off our block here, or our block, our heads. Then the block. Be careful. Uh, you will tear up your towel a little bit. You don't want to be throwing big old pieces of paper towel in there. Luckily, I just left the parts house to come here and need some scotch Brite to realize I'm out of scotch Brite. <laughs> There's a whole box in there. I was like, hey, I'm good. Well, it turns out when you pick up that whole box, the whole box is empty. Don't worry, I scavenged and found this little piece. Now I'm kind of scraping this up, which ain't the smartest for debris falling in our intake uh, ports, but we'll shot back those out. What I'm hoping is there's always a little bit of that area that shows when you paint. So I'm just trying to prep that. So when we hit it with a little paint, it'll stick. If you want to properly prep your motor, all you got to do is everything that I don't do everything I do. Just do it the opposite way. And you'll probably be in good shape. For example, you probably shouldn't paint chrome. Yet here we are with some 80 grit uh, chrome piece and I hope in a dream that the paint's gonna end up sticking to this. And some people's gonna say, Hey, paint's not gonna stick to that. To those people I say, you're right. <laughs> uh, it ain't gonna stick the greatest, it will stick to it and then we'll try to never pressure wash it. For the most part, it's gonna be okay. seal up this motor and try to expedite this process. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Happened with the old 80 grip flapper of death. <laughs> now that's scuffing and a roughing, that's what we want. If you can catch your fingernail on it, you're doing good. Overall, pretty happy with that. I'm gonna ditch them. And guys, I'm gonna uh, just go around and use Scotch Sprite and whatever else I can find and just scuff up this whole motor. It's gonna take a while and you probably don't wanna watch all that. I'm gonna be here scuffing my heart away. PF, where's the S? That was meant to be. There's a PF stamped right there. All right, guys. 
Scrubby dubby. After I prep that front, we're gonna go ahead and get some primer on this, that way it can be setting up. If anything, the primer, hey, everyone says you can't paint chrome. No one said you couldn't prime it. So I worked down our side here. One, you can see our oil pan down there. It was not prepped very well because as I scotch bright it, uh, half of it's just falling off. Uh, back here on the back, it's a little oil. That's always a good sign, right? I'm pretty sure they test run these things. So if that's the case, I wouldn't be surprised if they leaked a little bit or whatever. Maybe they don't test run them. Maybe they just prime them up or something. Maybe they don't do nothing and this sucker's just gonna leak oil everywhere. Before I run our scotch bright through that and spread oil around, uh, trying to wipe her down with some alcohol here. Clean her up, just clean her up. To get her where we're fairly happy with her being clean, we're gonna plug off some holes. I'm gonna use our little earplugs here to do that. Don't worry about them exhaust ports. You get a little paint on there and that sucker heats up. <sighs> She'll burn her right off. Put that all plugged up. I'm gonna take some alcohol. Just wipe down our intake. We're gonna get ready to set it on. Make sure there ain't no oil on these surfaces. Intake gasket right here. Them old China wall gasket piece of rubbers right there. You just take them and toss them in the trash where they belong. That's gonna be a big old glop of the, the silicone. This side up, be sure to read your gasket. It'll tell you. Build her up in the corner right here. And we're just gonna lay a bead all the way across the front. We're gonna do the same thing in the back, glob her up in the corners. Nice consistent bead all the way across. Glop. Next, set those gaskets down into place. If it'll let you. Man, we're going for the plop. Oh no! We're off to a solid start here. I've hit the uh, wall back here, knock the silicone off. Darn it. All right, this is exactly how you don't want to do it. I couldn't set it straight down on because of our valve covers. All right, we've got a mess and a half going on now. Definitely could have went a little prettier. The good thing is though, we're all lined up. Just gonna hop around and snug these down. And by snug, I mean as soon as it hits the intake, I'm stopping. Pull that little extra right off the front there where it ain't so ugly. Set our torque wrench here to 15 foot pound. Oh, she's got the swivel head. Torque sequence, just look that sucker up online. Right here's number one. Right there's 15 foot pounds. We're actually headed towards 30 foot pounds, but instead of just taking everyone to 30, I'm gonna do it in a, a step process here. So I'm gonna follow our uh, pattern here. We're gonna run them down to 15. Then I'll probably take them, I don't know. We may go 20 something, then to the 30. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. These are like the torque wrenches I had when I was in the Air Force. Uh, right there, we're about 22 foot-pounds. I'm just gonna repeat that process. As far as bolts go, when I ordered our intake, I just got a bolt kit that come with the hardware with the washers, or the bolts with the washers.
some more tips uh, I learned when I was in my Air Force days. On these, we will take them to it clicks. Two, three. We give it three. You don't try to tighten it anymore, just making sure that you actually truly got it to that torch. And then two, with these style, whenever you store these, uh, you want to take it back down to zero. You don't want to store it with tension on there. That's how you lose calibration in this torque wrench situation. Better store them at zero. Got a couple of used plugs here uh, that's great for painting. Use it to paint. Finish a little bit of prep work there. I'm not saying she's gonna last forever, but it'll half work or it won't. And I've got a family deal at five, but I'm also supposed to pick up my chassis today, which means we're about to have to do the boot scoop boogie to go get that sucker. This paint here though, we're gonna use our uh, semi-gloss. Yes, we're doing black, okay? I know that's gonna disappoint some of y'all, but I just want a black motor in this rig. Uh, this stuff likes to go on in a light coat, so we're gonna try to get a light coat on real quick. I'll have mine shaken, not stirred. Theo's over there just sawing logs through all of that. All right, not trying to get real good coverage here. Just trying to dust on a white coat to get it kind of uh, setting and sticking. Just gonna pop off the Made in USA badge. Squeaky. I can't believe you! You didn't paint it Chevrolet orange and leave that intake shiny. You just lost so many horsepowers. You dummy. If you would have kept that and put yellow plug wires, it would have been so fast. My great pappy had one with seven four barrel carburetors on top. Real hot rods have 17 carburetors. Yes, yeah, sissy. Come on. Now we're packed up and ready to haul butt. Come on, Express. Alice Chalmers tractor sitting there. The Wild West still exists. It's out here in Oklahoma if you go far enough south, guys. It's freaking wild out here. This unit's been sitting here for a while. She's the right color. Looks like we got some chassis going out the door. All right. Let's see her here. Nice little semi-gloss. She looks pretty. That's a good color there. Not too shiny, but not flat and dull neither. You think, Slicky? Fancy. Fancy. How'd our end caps turn out? Perfect. What's going on? Oh, inspecting the work. It looks good. There's our four link and all the goodies. Hello. Got a little echo in here. Got the old axle. Oh, forgot we even sent it with the steering box. All I like to do is load a million pieces and not scratch it up between here and the house. Did we mess it up right? Yeah, messed it up perfect. The question is, will she fit? Oh yeah, man. It made it about 10 one and some change. Yeah. She's just a hot rod hauler. That's all she is. <laughs> I brought them microfibers, but I got a box full of Christmas t-shirts we had forgot about. And I just ain't done nothing with. So we're just going to use some good Puddin's Fab Shop Christmas shirts to get all this stuff separated into the house. If it fits, it ships. We'll take it. We ain't had a Hummer on the channel yet, Slick. Don't take me a good time. I like that fiberglass top on that thing. That thing is a rig. Should be humming around everywhere. Yeah, yeah. just hum, humming around. Humming a humming a humming a hoo. To the left, we got the old town hall bank combo. <laughs> if you ain't got cars in the yard around here, you ain't living right. Yeah, you ain't fitting in. Yeah. You're gonna wear one yard of a month around here without at least 12 things on blocks. Oh my gosh. Look at the old camper special. <laughs> Y'all see what's holding that up in the front? <laughs> About 20 blocks. Stepping stone blocks of that. Yeah. Easy, Darla. We're gonna knock her off the blocks again. <laughs> I'll be rolling across the highway if you ain't careful, honey. Swing her on in here. All right, guys. All of our parts laid out. 
Uh, looks super duper good. Paint is a little tacky soft still, so you gotta be careful where you kind of grab on it. It's all right, guys. She's gonna be a driver, not a show car. So even if it gets a fingerprint here or there, we're gonna put her together and drive her. Now, speaking of paint, look like everything over here set up good. Nothing separated or acted funky. Like I said, a little light coat all the way around. And I think that's all I got time for before I gotta be with my wife here shortly. So I'm just gonna keep laying down coats. And we'll be back on this thing tomorrow to make some more progress. Yeah, it's got actually 30 minutes. I'm better on time than I thought. Uh, I should have popped our water pump on. Well, actually, no. Probably better do it like this. I wanna get it nice and clean, so it's gonna get the brake clean spray down. Feels a little oily. Got a short water pump here from 63 Corvette with a 327. That paint seems like this. It's sticking to it and covering really good. Top of the morning to you. Here at Puddin's Fab Shop, when I go to properly torque something, I like to listen for the three clicks. One, two, three. Dying using torque wrenches on water pumps. Who are we? 20 foot pounds is what the internet said. We're gonna look at putting on our uh, balancer. Last year, I bought this kit off Bill. Good old Bill, we ain't seen him in a minute. Just put the adapter to the adapter. I think that's how it works. These threads are nice and oily, so we're just gonna oil up our uh, our shaft. Put oil in here, clean that outside off, get it started, and then you just put the pusher on there. Ho! Heave! Ho! Oh, we got a while. I'll check, check back in with you. <laughs> Once you heave hover all the way down, just take it right back out. Get your pretty bolt with the hog molly washer. This is making me so nervous. It obviously was not seated all the way. Sixty foot pounds. Now that bolt actually finished running that down. And um, it shoved that balancer back where it's actually the pointer, the pointer's out of alignment. So it's actually hitting the pointer right now. Loosen that. Pop a plug back there, number one. Hey, I think we're getting some compression. We just popped it right out. So we know we're on compression stroke on number one cylinder. And so now we just got to get it all the way to top dead center and right there. Is our piston is on our way up pretty close to the top. We had actually went past top dead center. So back her off some. Now as I spin this this way, we're gonna see the piston start to come up. It's gonna dwell for a split second and then it'll start going back down. We've got to find the dead center of that. We're not gonna do that with a dead bore scope. Let me show you why, why we're checking this. According to this, which I painted it, but this mark right here would be zero or top dead center. You look at our balancer, we know we're super duper close, but our original mark on our balancer is way up here. So had you put this together and you try to time it off that original mark to that, you're gonna be in bad shape. I don't know why these are like this. Uh, we discovered that on my wagon that you can't trust this being put together like that. I almost wore my Pot County Legend shirt today. Oh, I am! <laughs> that wasn't even planned, no, but we're going to look so cool during this video. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, Slick's got the goods. Got the old touch up there for the transmission. Some people tried to grind on it and drill some holes in it or something. So the boroscope's going to charge, and once it charges, we'll come back to getting this all figured out. Pulled our indicator thing off, and it ain't going to line up either way. The marks are actually out past the edge of this balancer, 
So I'm gonna cut this bracket off and we're gonna end up welding it on there just where we want it. Here, don't worry, we'll fix your, in, your rebuilt engine for you. Gonna make our corners pretty and round. Now after we get this engine ready, which we're pretty close to where I want it, we're gonna start on uh, some chassis assembly and off of our old chassis over here, we need our uh, brackets that support our running boards. That's where all black everything comes in. Well, Not for the socks. Where'd you get them black denim shorts? Ordering them. <laughs> Ordering them? <laughs> You're like, I got that Pontiac over there. I need some black denim shorts, yeah. baby. drilling required. If me and Mortsky do trade, I hope he didn't think these brackets came with it. <laughs> what are you doing, old coyote hunter, huh? He woke us up at one in the morning, standing at the edge barking. He was scaring something off for us. Hey, I know how to get that off there. Just grab it. Hey, leverage. Leverage. All right, let me move the painted goods here. All right, Slick, I did the hard part. <laughs> These things are pretty clean like the rest of our stuff, so I'm just gonna give it a scuffing uh, where we can shoot her with a fresh coat. Just having a prep of Palooza here. Uh, needed the little reducer plate thingy for the fuel pump. Of course, they only sell it in chrome. Uh, chrome don't get you home. So we're gonna get that chrome off there. And I just realized we don't have the push rod for the fuel pump. Maybe we can scavenge one. All right, guys, back over here. Got us some blue tape on here. I put us a reference mark on our timing cover that we're going to uh, put our other reference marks based off of. Slowly coming up, slowly coming up, slowly coming up. Right there, we're starting to dwell. I'm gonna put us a mark right there. Spin her a little more, spin her a little more. Right there, I think she started to move. Let me backtrack it, just check. So we put us a mark right there. That was our first dwell, or that's when it first started dwelling. Uh, that was the piston not moving at all, and then right around there it started to drop. So right in between that should be dead nuts, top dead center. Next, we're gonna take this and match it to our balancer and wrap it around here. And yes, that is a book for the FedEx. Get us uh, marked over here, center. Uh, sorry, we missed you. They dropped them in our driveway. Me and Six can go put them on everyone's doors during lunchtime. Right, next, I'm gonna show y'all how to weld your bearings together. And yes, that is 100% a possibility when you start welding on stuff with bearings. The ground uh, will ground through stuff, and sometimes it grounds through a bearing, which arcs it and then eats it up down the road. So I rotated her back till our new center mark is uh, lining up with our indicator mark that we added over there. I'm gonna put this on there for some gapage between that. Then I'm gonna put that on line zero up with our mark. Press it up against there, and we're gonna pack it and hope for the best. It's all a man can do. If three packs won't hold it, proper manufacturing never would have. And y'all can see what we got now. Uh, we found dead nut zero. We lined it up with their mark of dead nut zero. Last thing we need to do is actually mark the balancer with something a little more permanent than uh, type and marker. You need me to tack over here? Oh man. We done gouged it. Someone done gouged it up. How you gouge this? Fix it. 
I got this stuff all sanded and primed. Looking pretty good. Got all the waves out of it. it. Had some waves, I guess, where they made it. So I sanded all those out and primed it. Now I just need to figure out what black he wants to use on these. In the meantime, I think we're going to go ahead and lay out the front end so I can start assembling it. Here we go. Sit. Leo, sit. 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 Theo had a vet appointment, so Slick stayed here and prepped. Prepped and painted. Get on in there. The question is, is there a little pusher rod in these old small blocks, the same as the, uh, that's a 57, ours is a 1980. Here's the pusher. We gonna clean her up. Little lube on it, slide it up on in. Yes, I know you can remove that bolt, put a longer one in there to hold it. That's the internet's favorite pro tip right there. Torque them, put a little paint on them. And uh, our spark plugs here, some AC Delcos. Right now they're gapped to 45 thousandths. Uh, we may have to change that in the future because I'm not sure what our ignition is going to require. Uh, but I don't want those holes open, so we're going to torque them down for now. Up top, I did go ahead and put in our uh, little cinder part for our oil gauge here. Watch out, about to have a dang old show motor here. Fun fact, uh, tighten those all up, everything went good on this side. Those things came with the hardware for them. The bolt back here wouldn't, uh, wouldn't tighten down all the way. I had to put a little bit shorter one in there, which just means that head ain't drilled and tapped as deep. Kind of interesting. For this at top dead center, I reckon we can look at a stab in a distributor here. Or do we put oil in it and spin that and primer some first? Probably should do that. Theo's here to help. Good boy. Where's the other nut that we're going since I've been messing with that, Slick's obviously been over here. Just left our spindles on our straight axle. I got the king pins in. Got our little radius. What do you call these arms? Wishbones. Wishbone. That ain't really a wishbone. Split. Split wishbone. Split wishbone on. Just getting everything mocked up here. Before you disassemble, if you got stuff to measure, be sure to measure it. Our tie rod, we just got this one mocked up because we need to put a boot on it, but she's still drying from paint. But before I ever disassemble this, I measure from that bung over to the center of that grease dirt right there, inch and a half. So then going to set this back up, we knew exactly where to set that. I'm gonna show y'all how to not prime your motor. I don't have a priming tool. I'd give Uncle Rick's his back. I do have this flat piece thingy that is uh, gonna interlock to our little wheel pump down there. And she favors the side, so we're gonna bend it around so it don't favor just the side. Oh, yeah, that went real well. We just broke it off. I'd rather it break out here than in there. <laughs> Cut us a little thing on the end of that shaft, polish it out. Gonna add our Lucas break-in oil. Usually I just get 10W30 and add the Lucas additive, but this stuff was actually cheaper. So 
So this break-in oil, it has all the goodies we need to keep our camshaft uh, happy. It's high zinc, this stuff. Like I said, through the parts house, getting five quarts of it's actually cheaper than getting their house brand oil and then the Lucas additive. Got our Wix filter on down here. I put this little cinder unit in the back to plug this where we don't lose oil out there. And let's hope I don't break this down in there. Sounds like you got a load on it. Oil, we're getting oil. There you go. That was oh yeah. Keep going. Oh, I lost it. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, Here she comes. I can feel it. Come on. Come on, baby. Don't be ornery. You know what? I'm making a mess. Oh, there she went. Yep, there she there went. She now, I wanted y'all to see that, so I left that off. Obviously, you could uh, leave your valve cover on, not make a mess, and you can kind of glance in there, sort of, kind of, maybe. This side, we ain't got deadly. I loosened our spark plugs where we're not fighting compression, and we're gonna rotate her one full turn here, or close to, I don't know what the magic solution is. I'm just hoping after we crank this motor, uh, we get some oil to that side. Still nothing. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Guys, I am bamboozled. Uh, I rigged us up a oil pressure gauge. Watch this. Fifty psi. I've sat there and held this thing for a minute at a time, a few different times. I've Cranked over the motor, rotated it a few different times. I still don't understand how we could possibly get it on one side, but not the other. The pump can't push it out. I'm using the sucker trying to suck it out. Maybe I've just had good luck in the past, but I've never had one fight me like this. Still not deadly. I'm, ba I'm bamboozled. On the right side of the lifter valley, through the lifters in the right side, off the same deal, so. So it oils, it oils. Plug in front of the block, plug it back the block. <laughs> it oils off the same thing. I just don't see how it could be anything plugged up, really. Yeah. All right. Because it just shows it tees off right there at the back of the block, and one side goes down the right side of the lifters, and the other side goes down the, you know, the right side. Hmm. So I was thinking, like, I had a cam bearing in wrong, but. It don't look like the cam bearing really has, it just oils the mains. That's what the hole in the cam bearing does. So I say send it. <laughs> All right, Uncle Rick says slap some <laughs> on it and fire it. Yep. She, she'll run or she won't. Yeah, it's got a warranty. It's gonna, well, it's gonna, it'll run until it don't or it'll run. <laughs> yeah. Not all priming tools are created equal. Uh, I googled it. Now, when I talked to the, like when I talked to Rick, I didn't say, "Hey, my priming tool's a rod." Uh, as I pulled that out, I noticed how oily it kept getting. That passageway right there was not blocked by that shaft, uh, stopping some of our oil flow from this side. And hey, look who's oiling up real quick now. I'm a dummy. I told you don't prime your motor like I do it, and you learn that here first, folks. I fixed it, Bill. They're oiling now. Also, to point out, uh, I thought 50 PSI was gonna be plenty of oil pressure. Doing it with this one in there, we're getting 70. So that 20 PSI will get you. Yeah, I kept pulling that out of there. I'm like, boy, this rod's just plumb soaked. Spin it, look down in there, see all that oil. Uh-huh. Waterfall. Uh-huh, someone's a dummy. Hey, let me be the dummy in front of y'all so you don't do it yourself. Now, as far as our priming tool goes, the one that just worked for us, uh, I had a HEI that was a cheap China one anyways, and me and Bill had robbed all kinds of parts off of this one. Oh, so, yeah, I didn't really have much left. I just stripped it down and wheeled this little piece of rod on there. Yeah, kind of feel like a idiot after that. And I could leave that out, but I ain't going to, because sometimes building cars, you do kind of idiot stuff. It's just part of it, I guess. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna tell myself to make myself feel better anyhow. Shit happens. We, yeah, what Bill said. 
Gotta get that oil pump lined up just right. I thought I had it, but we better not use my judgment today. Come on, I know you're right there. There we go. Just hold your tongue just right. She'll plop down in. Bill, if you find the mallet, just bump me upside the head and knock some sense into me today, okay? How many motors have you ever primed? Is it the second one? No. A third. Now, I've actually had luck with a cutoff flathead or a flathead screwdriver. I've primed one before. <laughs> one. That's why I thought it would work. Man, so someone must have primed it at one point and then me just turning it kept right. it going. But it had a little oil come out on them. I was like, shoot, we're good there. I'm gonna bring in the expert here since I ain't worthy today. <laughs> You been drinking again or something? No, no more <laughs> drinking. Any of that high potent. Hey, where's that thing you took off of there? We're gonna mark number one right there. Uh, that will be that allows us some um, adjustability mm -hmm. that away and that good. away. Just make sure my head was back up there and out of my ass. Uh, this is all done, guys. I I don't know what I was thinking. Besides, I wasn't. That was the problem. Anyhow, she's cleaned up. It's to the point where I wanted it to be. Uh, really liking how it's looking. I think we're gonna go with just simple finned valve covers on it. Uh, other than that, everything being black with our alternator and fuel pump kind of standing out with a little color. I'm just liking the simplicity of that. Now over here, Slick, he kind of had to pull apart some of what we were putting together. Uh, we actually adjusted our leaf spring pack, uh, added a spring, removed a spring, kind of equaled it out. Had to holler at the Bowling Brothers to see what they recommended for our desired ride height, blah, 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 nothing fun. And then on our kingpins, before it was mocked up without shims, so he had to get the right shims in there. Uh, you can't hardly see it right down there, but it's in there. And then for him, a lot of the stuff he's doing is painting all this little stuff like the tie rod ends and just all the little odds and ends the crap's just adding up sand out of everything a little sand here or there <laughs> it's got our steering box uh up on there front end's pretty well kind of getting there uh he don't like our nuts for the top side of our backing plates he said it's just they're just short enough to not get the the nylon on the locking nuts so we're gonna hold off and get proper bolts for them and now we're gonna work on the back i was really hoping we we're gonna have all this together today but uh that's all right that motor's new it should just prime <laughs> <laughs> just like our front bars our rear bars i had measured them as well now i still haven't set pinion angle actually because i need the weight on the car the the weight of the body we need the weight of the full drivetrain and we need to dial in our suspension as far as ride height goes and then we can actually set a pinion angle but you can't really set a pinion angle and then change the stance of your vehicle and the weight of it where it changes the stance and keep it accurate. So if you're trying to set a pinion angle on a rolling chassis, you're kind of pissing in the wind. Just like if you try to prime a small block Chevy without an actual priming tool. <laughs> For an hour and a half. <laughs> I can't get nothing done over here just cranking away. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only part I'd be ashamed of. <laughs> the hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, I don't know it was the hour and a half, but it was longer than it should have been before I realized I'm an idiot. You're wild. I was like, man, we're going to be doing this all day long. <laughs> Come out here all day tomorrow. <laughs> Eventually, she's going to pick up. <laughs> so you never looked down in there when you were doing it? I mean, I did, but I, I don't know. It should have been just like water falling on that Bill, it's in the past. We're moving, we're moving forward. I bet I'll never do it again. Yeah. All right, looking good here. Guys, I'm checking some reference measurements here off of our kingpin to some mountain reference points on our frame. Everything <coughs> on the front end's measuring just dead money. Uh, it, it's beautiful. We don't want her going crooked down the old road, the old straight axle in there at a 30 degree. It'd be, look, it'd be looking like Michael Jackson in the thriller and when he's a zombie going like that. Pull up next to the stop sign, ask guy. Did you, did you prime your small block Chevy too? Me too. <laughs> Me too, man. <laughs> it's a good thing Slick assembles chassis better than I prime motors. Yeah. Or we'd get no, we got no progress done today. Now I've never aligned hot rod stuff and I ain't claiming I'm properly aligning this, uh, but adjusting this one here coming off of our steering box is setting this one. So I'm trying to get it where it looks like it's 
nice and straight. Now I see now I went a little too much. So we can turn that and adjust it. I'm gonna say right in there is pretty close. And then since your steering holds that arm, when you adjust this one, it actually just really uh, adjusts this one. It's the same thing. I'm gonna just kind of eagle eye it here till when I stand up. It looks pretty straight with the axle. We're kind of ballpark-ish there. Have Bill check the backing plate or go to the edge of the backing plate. We are 48 and 11 sixteenths and front is about 49 and a sixteenth not quite an eighth in between so we can kind of fine tune that fine tune that till we get it matching a little better before it was off like an inch and a quarter so we're making progress or just take it to the alignment shop <laughs> i want to take it to the alignment shop without the front doing that or that the front be hopping <laughs> <laughs> it'll be close enough like that up and at her boys yeah, Bill's got to come over here more where we can keep them young. Down a little bit more. Yeah, down a little bit more. Oh, yeah. I think that's Woo! Slick, Sand. sl slick sandblasting? Yep. Half a beach in here. No. Oh, I thought you said a shitload. That too. <laughs> that too. But, uh, hey, you don't have to put me asking him that in there, Chris. Just the uh, half a beach in here is good. Now, this rear end was, uh, it, you got to clean it out just from manufacturing debris and grease and all that kind of crud. Just how it comes from the manufacturer. Uh, and then on top of that, now obviously we got sand from having it blasted and painted. Hey, that's getting out and hitting our paint. That paint will last or it won't. Gotta scrape our, our masking tape off these edges. And we don't want no more uh, brake clean sitting on our paint than we have to have on there. So we'll wipe her with a sense of urgency. <laughs> You trying to be the star or what, dude? <laughs> He's like, that's cool and everything, but when do I get pet? Good boy. Did you a little zip tie and some rags here and we can clean up our uh, rear end. I'm first. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's cold. It's like said, it's like we're uh, working a cannon. Yeah, timing a cannon to fire. You remember the guy from the meet and greet with the old black powder on his side? <laughs> <laughs> is that, I think he had to use this to reload his pistol. We bet a guy his pistol went from his damn shin to his armpit. I believe if he would have shot somebody with that, he would have put a hole in him the size of this center chunk here. Got the old brake clean Q-tip. Got me feeling a little, a little wobbly over here. Feeling a little good. Now the coilovers, we took them to the top hole. There's some amplification to figure out to get this right height set up. <coughs> Again, kind of one of those things where you can't 100% tune it till you got 100% of the weight on it, unfortunately. Uh, so we're not putting lock washers on any of this rear stuff until we get the, or lock nuts until it's 100% together. And then we can 100% tune it in, adjusting our coilovers and the mounting holes. And then when all that's Finally situated, we'll put the lock nuts on. It's kind of like a final assembly minus the final part. Knocked up our backing plates, and guys, I just realized we're to a point where we're better ahead to clean up some of the mess here and get reorganized. And we still got plenty of stuff to clean on. Slick's prepping more parts. I've been wire wheeling cylinders, or master cylinders, I mean. We're gonna hit it with some of that cast gray we got to touch up the transmission. And Bill, Bill's out there yapping away. So some of y'all's gonna get a kick out of this. Slick seen a comment on one of the videos that uh, he was like, Bill, get a hold of me. It's your buddy Travi from California. So long story short, uh, Bill ain't had contact with this dude in a long time. And this guy's watching put in his fab shop one day. And I was like, holy crap, there's Bill in the video. So uh, they've got connected and now they get talking on the phone. So that's pretty cool that the video uh, got, got Bill back in contact with an old friend of his. Now they're out there 
talking about California stuff. <laughs> Bongs and kids. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep cleaning up, painting up. Y'all don't wanna watch us just clean and paint. That's basically what we've been doing for two weeks here. Yeah. So we'll be back on this thing tomorrow. Hey, hey, hey. We got me and Theo on the job today, day, day. Guys, I tightened up some of our loose hardware, uh, just snugged it down uh, yesterday and this morning. Uh, more painting of good stuff. Got the center chunk there painting. Got some paint on our brackets and more paint going on in here. It's almost like to build a nice car, you just gotta take all the parts, clean it and paint it and put it together. We also had some medical appointments uh, in the city with my wife. So we got a couple hours today that we can assemble, but we're gonna assemble. I didn't lie to you guys. I thought the center chunk I bought was a limited slip edition, but apparently I did not get the limited slip edition. Oh. That's a good thing. Probably would have made it even heavier. Blew our rear end out yet again. And over here, guys, if your gasket comes in a box like this, you know it's gonna be a good gasket. Right here, we got the lube locker 1250. She's a gas, oh, C900, same model as the international pickup truck over there. She's a composite, she's silicone, she's everything you need to be to hold in the lubrication. Made in the USA. Made in the USA, fitting like it was made in China though. What's going on here? Just pulled her off there and flip it over and she fits a little better. All right, here she comes. Little real small light thing. Woo! Now I know why everyone likes the Ford 9 inch. She's beefy. Oh, beef takes supreme. All right, beefy, why don't you go on there for me, beefy? Yeah, yeah. What's the malfunction here? I know you'll go in there. Let's get your butt in there. Get on in there. Oh, my fly's undone. Let the cow out the barn. Put a washer on that, a couple of that taps. Got one start down there. There she goes. She's starting to wiggle on. Yes, sir. I'm sure one of them studs is just a little off or something. Uh, just drag him. We're gonna torque them in just a second properly. Our bag of goodies, we had our little vent here. Don't wanna forget it. There we go, a little special fine thread. Snug. We're gonna torque them all except this lone wolf down on the bottom. Can't get a socket on it, just a wrench. We're gonna give it the German torque. Just get it good and tight. The rest of them, star pattern, torque wrench. She should be happy. We'll grab our axle for our driver's side. And this baby here, don't forget to put your uh, O-ring down on there. I robbed a little bit of our grease and just kind of wiped our O-ring of hair. I wiped in here where our seal's gonna go. Speaking of seal, boom baby, there she is. Rob a little bit of that grease, just the slightest amount. Amount put on there. Goes in there. The little Harbor Freight Smacker. Tappy, tappy, tap. All right, once that's in, stab your axle. Slide right in when you make it to the O-ring. Just a few little pushes will get it. That side pushed right in. This side's gonna make me a liar. What the smell. Problem is, took off a piece of our O-ring. Dang it. Just a hair, just a, just a slight shaving. Probably guaranteed to leak now. I know we were fitting tight because it shaved the same amount all the way around. That's crazy. That was a circle. I was the one who broke it. We're gonna roll with it for now. We gotta replace O-ring in the future, we'll do it. 
four uh, red retaining nuts will keep us all together. The retaining plate just slides on. Yeah! Yeah! Wheel cylinder goes right in. Yep, yep, yep. Our brake shoes, whole assembly. Uh, that still is together. I'm taking it apart. Let me get up there. Your little retaining pins. This little doohickey. Spring one. Spring two. Alright. Pop the drum. I'm gonna put that on there because we're gonna actually adjust our anchor pins where everything centers up. So this right here, we're gonna loosen it. All right, that's nice and loose. Then, I'm gonna go back through here and get on our uh, adjuster pin and we're gonna run our drums out until they're tight. Getting there. After a few more turns, that sucker's locked. And uh, once you do that, it's supposed to center our eight anchor pin here. And then we're gonna lock this back down. And that is supposed to center your drums or your shoes to your drums as a whole. There we go. Put a little bit on it. 80 foot pounds, that felt about right. Now with that tighten, now I'm gonna loosen our brakes off. If we we're getting ready to drive this thing, you'd loosen it to the point of having a little bit of drag. Since we're gonna be rolling it on and off the trailer, uh, shoving it around some, I'm actually gonna loosen them off a little more and we'll just have to actually adjust them before it's drive time. Shoo! Shoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Is it getting hot in here or is it just me? My heart's going, uh, breathing a little heavy. Because I have been absolutely waiting to see these wheels and tires go on this chassis. We may only have one on there, but man oh man are these making it look like a hot rod instantly. Now when y'all think of hot rod, a lot of people think of the fattest tires you can put on the back. People's mind go to like tea buckets and stuff with tires wider than that Icon toolbox, but not me. We're more traditional hot rod where we're thinking kind of a tall, kind of skinny tire. So lean right up over here. Here's what we're running, guys. Uh, kind of showed you before. I can't even pronounce that. Excelsior. Uh, these are radials, but they look like a bias ply uh, as far as the, the pattern on them goes. The Stall Sport radial. These ones are a seven inch on a 16, 7.0 R16. For the front, we're going with the five inch, 5.0 uh, R16. Our steel wheels are from 40 Fords. Uh, so our front ones are four inches wide. Our rear ones are four and a half inches wide. That extra half inch will get you real hot rod stuff. And uh, these are nice and gloss black. You can see on the back side. The front side's just got body filler and stuff like that in the air or from the air on it. So let's get this on there and y'all will see hopefully the beauty that I'm seeing. Pneumatic makeover. Follow that up with a little sweet potato happy ending. Right here when I'm talking. Now that right there is a proper steel wheel for an old hot rod and a proper looking tire for one too. Sit her down and just appreciate that beauty. And I know it don't look much different to y'all, but I'm so happy seeing that together. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's tasty. Looking at her front, 
Uh, we're gonna pack our bearings, and some of y'all's gonna appreciate this. Someone sent me out a bearing packer here. Y'all know I'm usually wadding them in my hand. Uh, so we're gonna load this sucker up. I've never used one of these before. But I'm sure I'll make a mess and do it wrong. Since we're putting her in the professional tool here, someone else had sent out some of this Lucas grease, some high-end stuff. So that's what we're gonna use in here. Watch out, someone's gonna think we're professional because that's what I look like right now, right? Woo, I guarantee you this is good stuff. It smells like no grease I ain't ever smelt before. I've smelt a lot of different greases in my day. You know what you call a single grease? A grease. If you got a flock of grooses, then you call it grease. I'm sure there's a better way to do that. After that, I think we just insert this. Then you pull your plug thingy. And get another glove. No glove, no love. What way do we drop that sucker in? Down like that? And twist that on and shove down. Oh, here it comes. Don't shove grease through it. Uh, didn't really come out the sides. Oh yeah, it started to. What happens if you shove it, put it on the other way? Yeah, uh, not deadly. Now I can't get it off. <laughs> Me and professional tools, you know. Hey, uh, I knew I wasn't crazy. I looked, I looked it up, damn it. They sell a priming tool that does not have that piece. And I've seen someone use one of them and that's why I thought I was good to go. I ain't defending, I just justifying a little bit of my crazy. Would be nice if I could have that bearing back. Uh, number two. Yeah, yep, number three. I don't know, I'm still good at making a mess with this thing. Number four, fix that. But then around the top, I don't know. Maybe we'll just, we'll just spin that little extra around them outside and she'll be all right. She'll burn up or she won't. That we go there and then there's a little cap that goes on to protect that. That way it kind of stays clean even. Quite the little setup there. And now we're ready for next time. Another day, another blue glove. Here at the fab shop, assembly continues. We got this side together already. Uh, slicks, just been rerouting our brake lines. All that was already pre-made by the Bowling Brothers, so you ain't missing nothing there. Just clamp her back in place. Let's get this side together. Oh, and a little pro tip for you. Especially on a black chassis, you wanna keep you a black uh, paint marker. The way our drums were taped off, like here, that lip right there, you can see that. We don't want that rusting, making our old show car here look bad. So I took our paint marker and I just painted that edge around there, guys. Now, obviously that ain't gonna stand out near as bad. And it's probably gonna keep it from rusting for a good long time too. And on this one, I got a little extra fancy just cause I hate the wheel weights. I actually colored our wheel weights where they kind of blend in on those black stillies too. And of course, if you scratch or anything like that, you can just dab in, dab in a little bit of this. See right there where that was taped off, but we can see a little bit of bare metal. We can probably work that down in there about like so. And bam, see that? She disappears. Go with a little front assembly here. Don't forget our pushers here in the wheel cylinder. That'll get you. Mm. Small shoe, big shoe. Small shoe goes forward. Yep. We're gonna dollop us about a golf ball size amount of grease down in there. Bearing number two, number dosy. Why ain't that going on there? How come every time I do the second side, it's a pain in the butt when the camera's rolling? The other side goes together perfect. Why well, that bearing's being ornery, but instead of fighting it, I'm just gonna use this nut to push her in. Back that off. We wanna tighten it by hand, actually. About right in there. We'll take that. <laughs> J 
Just recording a hit television show over here. Just playing. Tire shot now, sir. Put them tire in alignment. Go get you some tires and we'll align it. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. All right, guys. Just like our rears, we're gonna loosen this, tighten the, tighten the shoes, and then tighten this, and then back off the shoes. The exact same process. Yeah, get them sexy mamas on there. We did lose a few of our lug nuts. Three won't hold it. Five never would have. This. Yep. That goes on that. Think it's gonna be a good one. Hmm. No? You're not liking it neither? What? She don't like it. Like what? The Model A. What? You're lying. I asked you if no. it's going to be a good one. No, the Model A, this thing, until you, it was good, until you turn it and you destroyed it. Oh, you're one of the keep it original? What? Keep it original? Yes. Get out of this shop. I don't like change. Get out of this shop. You're fired. Fire, fire me. You, you finish this car up and put it back to original. I'll be at the house sitting on my hind end. You get it back together then, Miss Keep It Original. All the original stuff sitting right over there. So get to putting it together. We're just playing with each other, guys. She's ornery. Keep it original. This is going to be so much better than original. You can't even spell original. Side <laughs> Give her a slap. Does that make it better? Oh, yeah. Man, oh man, guys. Yep. Like that, that's hot rod stuff. That's what we want. Sitting with a good rake right now, guys. Just looking at the ground. Not quite, baby. It's going to be good. I promise. Just just give me a little more time. I think you'll see what I'm I'm vision in here. Mm -hmm. There's always a lot of things going in there. All right. Tell all my dirty secrets. Dad can't stay focused for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a thousand even the 10 year olds like he's got a thousand things going on in his head he's here here like when you were sick you were like crying because you couldn't work in the shop all right that's, that's all the secret yeah, <laughs> that when you were sick you were crying because you couldn't work in the shop thank you ella you're welcome dad is your name weiner <laughs> <laughs> at least theo gets me Starting to do our bleeding process. Uh, to initially get her bled out, we're gonna do the vacuum. Starting to get some fluid here now. But don't make sense. After the air bleeding, we just go to some good old manual pumping here. Get the rest of the little bit of air out of it. Also check for leaks. Uh, we did have a leak here and a leak there. Just snug it up, no big deal. We can hear the brakes. Uh, Slick's getting a good pedal there. I'm just gonna give her a couple more here just to make sure. We're also flushing out new built brake lines, which is never bad uh, debris. And everything else you can flush it out. I'm happy with that last one right there. Sounded better, don't hear no more air coming out or nothing. I like that. Breaking news, folks. We've got a stopper. Breaking news. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Theo, you looking like a thick boy. You've been eating good, yeah. huh? We're gonna uh, look at getting our drive drain together next. Uh, get our little plate here where we can pick this up. Slick has started loading up our torque converter with some fluids over there. Deck six, only the finest. Yeah. What's the other one? My teacher, my teacher, Rebecca, read this word. <laughs> Her little, she's like, Greenland, and then she's like, Greenland. Snuggle these down. Yep. Right there. Yeah. Theo over here sneezing. He's feeling blessed in his new life. He's got it bad. All right. We are free from the stand. Flex plate, we got a hole there. We got a hole there. So I'm just gonna take that as an indicator to line that up. Double hand, hand slammy, proper install. 
We got a uh, little lock washers, fine thread units there. And we might have to get that old torque wrench back out for these. Bang, can't even get one started. You gonna put some deadlock on those teeth? You gonna lock tight them? Yeah. Never wanna come apart, huh? No. Half the bolts on your car are locked tight, so have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> If the star washer and the uh, proper torque don't hold it, then the red Loctite never would have. This one was being a little ornery to start. We didn't want to risk it for the biscuit, so we're just going to fix it. Oh yeah, I like the mat. Don't forget your eye protection. So here's going to be a good thing for y'all to talk about. The dowel is supposed to be here where I lined up the holes. Do you have to have that? I most certainly did not put one on the wagon and it ain't wobbled apart yet. <laughs> Slick was worried for it centering it up, but y'all see me have to beat it on there. That's hub centric to our crank, so it's definitely centered. You're going to ask Mordski, but he ain't going to know. He's going to ask Mojo, who actually knows everything going on there. He'll be like, hold on, let me think for a second. Uh, hey, Mojo. Tight's tight, centered, centered. We don't need no stinking dowel pin. We're gonna put the sauce on them. Oh, that one wanted to stay there. Yeah, all right. Watch out. If you put a torque converter in there and you think you're balanced, you may not be. Or ask me how I know. <laughs> Whoa! Here's your pro tip for loading your torque converter. It takes forever to fill with fluid. Someone said you can thump it and vibrate it and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I just take the little cap that comes on it and force it in there. It's getting some pressure. Hmm? It's getting some pressure, that's for sure. We're gonna get us about two quarts worth in here. Oh, spitting back. When she starts spitting back, you're probably good. I'm sorry, buddy. Spinning her, just kind of shaking it. There she goes. I think that's all the way. She dropped, dropped, flopped, ready to rock. Especially if I'm here, we're eating lunch. <laughs> yeah. I don't miss the killer next time. Rest the killer. We're eating lunch. That ch -ch -ch pneumatic thing sure is handy. This will pull it in. I'm gonna go find us some torque converter bolts. Finding the right ones for the wagon was a pain, so when I found them, I bought extras. It's like I knew I was gonna do another overdrive small block someday. Did it thread? Yeah. Got that orange stuff on there. Yeah. We're gonna tighten each one just a little bit, and then spinner. Rotate the old motor. We can get them all. Perfect. Yep. Exactly why we did not tighten it. It's because the converter was not lined up with flex plate. Gotta get them all just right. Yep. All right, that's our last one there. So we'll torque it, torque our other two. We'll be sitting good. It's all good in the hood, baby. Perfect. She's itching. She's ready to go. Get her. Probably would have been a beneficial to move this to there, but here we are. 
Uh, our chassis sits so low, you just can't straight approach that. When we push her any more forward, we're gonna blast them shocks, which is not good. Dang though, low rider, plastic ramps. Yeah, does this look, so, no. All right, what kind of shop does this look like? I had some wood blocks. Plastic blocks. Pla does, does this mainly block right here look plastic? Around here we have only the finest, strongest, hardest wood. You all right? Yep. Luckily, as that wheel found that toe and that real thick sketcher there, offered a premium protection. Come on, sketcher, give us a. <laughs> yeah. Where's my sponsorship? <laughs> Here we go. Slow and steady like Betty Spaghetti. Whoever the hell that is. All right. Come down just a hair more. In the right direction right there. They may ain't started, but they're kind of wedged. That'll just keep that from pushing back. And then she drops here. She should line up pretty stinking close. Probably go a hair more slick. Probably just get a quarter inch between there. No more. This touching. Oh, you're touching? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I think someone comment was concerned that our motor wasn't going to fit. They're concerned because we were using a mock-up motor. But guys, the mock-up motor is of the same. They're like, are you going to use the same motor? Well, yeah. What will bite you is Bill learned the hard way. If you have an LT mock-up motor with small block Chevy, it does not line up way off. So Who had that one, though? Uh, Uncle Rick. Uncle Rick had an LT mock-up block, and Bill used it to mock his block up, and it did not work. Is that the same one I used in my truck? Was it crooked when you put the other motor in? Mm-mm. See, dead money. You can get the tape measure out right now. <laughs> oh, no. Bucko. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, no, I use the same one. We pop the hood and the motor's in there <laughs> like at a 45. <laughs> Coming down. Woo, baby. Oh, guys. Oh, I've been waiting. Many years in my life, me and Slick have talked about something like this for a long time, since I was uh, probably about 17 or 18, saying one day it's gonna happen. Today's one day. First time seeing my rolling chassis of the hot rod build. Looking super nice here all together. There we go, pull it off, pull it off. You gotta... Oh yeah, we're getting there. Out. No. <laughs> Electric starter comes with some complications here. Guys, we rolled her out. Got some glamour shots of this beauty out there where I could send some to the Bowling Brothers who uh, sponsored this build or, you know, worked a deal with me on the chassis. That's a huge thanks to them. This is beautiful. Uh, and they saved us a ton of work uh, doing what they do and they're good at what they do. So our factory brackets here, we had painted them and we're just gonna mock this all up because you're actually, you're running boards and fenders and all that crap need to go on before the body sits down. Uh, so we have not mocked all of this stuff up before. So we're gonna see what it takes here. Mama showed up earlier and they picked out Theodore and new little collar, fancy little bow tie. You look like a dork, Theodore, but we still love you. Those have been on there a while. With paint. With paint. With paint. Pot County Loctite. Put that sucker on there and paint it. About good half inch thick paint. Whoa. Whoa! Found it. About lost that show quality bumper. You ripped it. Ripped. She's ripped. Oh, ripped my britches. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Sure enough, blew out the pocket. Yeah. Got a speed hole on the back. 
we got commando around here, so don't y'all be looking at the backside. <laughs> See a buffalo or scissor tail. This thing don't seem a car here, so you can uh, you can bet we're gonna paint these. We're time crunch, so we're gonna powder coat them real quick and put her out in the oven. We're gonna lose the shop. We're gonna lose the shop. All right, Mortsky. Set her out here. She'll be ready to go in about I don't know five minutes. Get out your Harbor Freighter super glue. We're putting rubbers on our high-end build. We're fancy. Yeah, we fancy. The rubbers here, guys, they uh, go between where a running board's gonna sit, I guess. Uh, that has some glue on the back. We clean them as much as we could. And all I got is the old super glue. She contains the ethyl sensocorrelate. That's how you pronounce that. Instead of a dab will do you, a tube will do you. Oh, there went half that tube. You already have a hole in it? Dude, that does feel so redneck. Don't mind me, just super bang. That may be Harbor Freight, but it don't play around. No, <laughs> Look, it. it won't come off my finger. Gosh. Did you say that holds your teeth together? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said. I thought, I thought Taylor said, I told you that crap will hold your teeth together. <laughs> Seats. Oh. They're holding my seats together. Who all right, that that'll hold it for, we just need it so we can get all, uh, all of our bolts lined up, guys. That's what we're trying to do here, not be fighting this shifting easily. Mm -hmm. Get her lined up, Slick. I don't fight. Yeah. It's all the wrong way. I mean it's on the wrong way. No, it's all the way, like I can't. It's only goes one way. You need a socket set up too? I can try it there. Let me try it this way, hold on. Did you get your started? I got that. Can't get it on that side, I already tried. You did? Yeah. Oh, my thumb was in the way. Really. No. Okay. Woo! Right. Rubbing was racing there. It'll bluff out. This one ain't lining up as good as our other side did. Want me wiggle it? <laughs> lining up there. That's where the firewall goes. Let's shoving that off there, though. Yep, I think the radiator. But once we get that bolted up to all that, yeah, it'll... Suckers. Guys, our fenders, running boards here. Uh, we're just gonna keep working and get it mocked up, lined up. Nothing too exciting here. Someone forgot to peel the tape off that one. Oopsie. <laughs> Looking pretty good. Nice and low. Yep. Got those lined up good, matching. That, did I hear a oh wow from someone? Is it starting to look like a good car again or did I ruin it? That's right, we are working like robots. Uh, I got the power team here today, this morning. Doing most of the leg work, we got Theodore, Mr. Bowtie himself, and then we got the almost as helpful as Theodore Helper Slick. <laughs> Guys, we are pertinent, ready to set this down. Uh, but to do that, obviously, we cannot just lower that down because these arms are gonna hit fenders and all that kind of good stuff. So we're gonna have to get this chassis out the way and then got get that down on some little rolly dolly cart things and get it situated and oh 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 there's a dog behind me man all right let's do it sorry guys i just keep stepping back and appreciating that uh, it looks so tough just with the front fenders on i really just had this up on the block yesterday so y'all can see what it was gonna look like when it pulled a wheelie okay about eight inches worth hop cocaine hop cocaine in the parking lot Mm. Oh, no, no, Jack it back up. Slick, you rookie. Good thing it's already been in there. Go higher. One side at a time. One side at a time. <laughs> Note to self, don't jack it there no more. You, I, was oh, like that. I was gonna say, now we know why that paint's cracked out because someone maybe did something similar. Well, no, because it sat way too high before. <laughs> Yeah, that, if it was that, like, that was a... <laughs> you, just, you just WrestleMania slam that sucker. We're good, crap. I'm glad I caught it before it went all the way down. Mm. We just want to show off this Mega Flex right here, baby. Y'all tell Dirthead Dave and Ian from Big Tire Garage come see me. <laughs> I need some help on setting up some four-wheel drive machines. We still got all four tires on the ground. 
I'll see you two girls at the trails. <laughs> Me just blasting through the woods. <laughs> Woo. Sweet mama's on the ground. Coming down. Coming down. Our rear one we're gonna bolt on because it's at the very back. Our front one, we're just gonna set it where one of the uh, little mountain pads are. I think we'll be all right. No help needed, thank you. Oh, now I look like Leo. <laughs> Can't get up. <laughs> Come hang out with me and Ratchet Strap Ricky and the boys. Country boy, chicken survive. She'll go. What is it, Phil and Sketch? I'm just get my hand on it. Trust the process, Slick. I don't. <laughs> I've got us this far. Okay. Next, you want to gently fold your washcloth. Easy does it, Slick. You're touching. Now going together is a little different than we've ever done before just because there's actually a lot of wood blocks that go in between there to support the, the body. So as you can kind of see here, we're having to get a little redneck to make some crap work. My long hair just can't cover up my red neck. So our wood blocks, they need to kind of hold up in place. We don't know if we can slide them or not. What I want to do is take a nut cert because it's kind of the shape and size we need. We're going to build our nut cert up here just a hair with a couple wraps of tape where we can wedge that in there and then put a bolt from the top to hold it. But then after it's together, be able to pry it all apart and out. You just want to take your hammer here. <laughs> I don't know that'll ever come out, but it's in there. Oh well. Progress is progress. No, that'll pull out. We got these two wood blocks to worry about. There's a full cross member that goes in this one, and we have a couple holes, so I just put a wood screw in it to hold it up. Get the old dust bowl body mounts installed here. We were taking our old Model A's apart just to have firewood stay warm. Put your bolt head in there. That'll hold our block up. These wood blocks. Uh, they went to the cross member we had cut out, I do believe. And we are looking good here, guys. We are lined up pretty close to the back. Got a bolt hanging, got a mount right there. So we're gonna ease her down. We're gonna do the front a little bit. Then we'll move to the rear and back to the front. We have touchdown. Phew! There's like sweating bullets. Oh, like All right, we better get some max distributor clearance. Move our speedo cable before we wipe out our distributor. <laughs> All right, now this time sitting down, we got some real clearance to pay attention to here. Looking good, looking good. Tight fit. Everyone worried about distributor cap going on and off. That yeah, will be good. Now, can we turn them screws and clamp it down? Don't worry about that. We got zip ties. Clearance, clearing, clearance. For our front, cut up some more mud flap here, drilling some new holes. 
Now, I'm not saying it's a competition, but ours may look a little better than what come out of there. That old hucky pucky. <laughs> Show quality museum car. <laughs> Pot County museum car right here. Y'all yeah. didn't think she's going to be about it, about it. All right, we're started up front. Are we load off here? Yeah, yeah weight's pretty well off. And besides that, we got two bolts on that thing. The bolts at that, cross member that one. We got plenty of body bolts to stab in, uh, but as good as everything had been lining up here, mock up, no expected trouble there. I think we're gonna unhook it, roll her back, and get all of our body bolts in. Getting old. Locking pliers, I choose you. Yeah. If y'all can see that daylight down in there, just trying to get that hole lined up. Here's the secret to nice car building. Blue tape and rags. Got just about all of our body bolts started. This front one we thought we had started was not started and now she's been a little ornery. We need the whole car to whoo whoo that away. It's trying right there. Okay. I don't know if it's going or not. The range is on top of the... Here! <laughs> Push too hard. Your kids will be born naked. I can't get that in there. We need a better setup than that. We need to strain. Let's drill a hole out. Yeah! We got her. So here at Put and Missing Parts Restoration, Restore, and more, uh, sometimes you're missing something, and we are definitely missing something. Now, as y'all seen, I cut out some of the rear floor and then built metal floors. We really didn't cut that much structure out of here, but we got a slight problem. By slight problem, I mean a little bit bigger than slight. Uh, that stuff's supposed to line up. And that door is most certainly supposed to close, not self-open. We put all the wood back where it went, uh, but we just, you know, we know something needs shim, something ain't right here with it all sucked down. So your cowl, that's part of your firewall, gas tank, this whole assembly, you know, our doors are all attached to it. Uh, Slick said, well, our gap's good over here. So we know nothing changed right here. So if we need that door to pick up and the front's pinched, that means something should probably be underneath these mounts over here, which we don't have nothing. However, give her the bean slick as you pry down on that and uh, shim that, it does pick it up where it latches again. I'd say quarter inch shim probably around there. Hmm, maybe more, half inch or who knows. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep putting them in. So the thing is we're prying back right here. If we had something underneath the front bolt as well with that one loosened a little bit, then we tighten that one and then cinch that down. I think it's going to shim it a lot. Right now we're just kind of getting the very rear of it picked up. So something probably was in there. I was a betting man. And if someone lost it, uh, it's probably his fault. I, feel, I don't think you lost it because you kept the rest of it. And there, well, would, be one, there would be one left somewhere. And maybe we did. I don't know. We didn't get none of the wood wrong. I know that. Yeah. I just don't know if there was like a thick chunk of rubber in there or something that I didn't know of. Not really sure, guys, but we do know. Well, that's thin rubber, so that's what was probably protecting the running board side of things. Uh, we know something had to be somewhere because the doors closed great before. And if you're thinking, oh, he messed it up. I knew he was going to ruin it. Guys, these old bodies, they move. Uh, it is not uncommon to have to shim around an old hot rod after yep. you put it back together. So yep. don't, don't take me to the, but don't, it don't make sense that once we tightened it down to this, it's off. I open and close those doors a thousand times when it was on my cart and it was never, it was never off. Now that it's cinched down to something, it's like it pulled it wrong. So I think the body's holding true. Like I said, I think we're just off on our mount somehow as far as gappage come on follow me friends now if you're thinking is that five six taints plate still yes you are correct and there is wood underneath them two bolts by the way they never came out of there so i still don't know what's different here 
All I know is when we put this back underneath towards the rear and then tighten down the front, it picks everything up and makes it happy. We're gonna cut this piece in half right at four inches and that'll be a shim for each side. One body shim, fresh off the press. Old body shims in some primer then over here we're going to get her looking a little better we're going to get the old skinny wires off of it oh yeah i reckon we got to put some fenders on at some point too probably after we get the doors on probably <laughs> assuming we get them there <laughs> you run the dang parade wheels one time and it ruins your hot rod parts <laughs> that done got the big bird yellow let me get that touch-up marker out hey you know, because everyone's going to see that paint behind that steely. I know it's there, sir. I'll be on camera, I mess up. Just play him. Probably need these off to put the fenders on since we got to wait on paint to dry on our shims, anyhow. Time to get that fender. Special hardware delivery. We'll get down there, we're gonna have to pull your running boards, fenders, all that stuff, guys. We ain't tightened any of that crap on the underside. We're just, uh, well, actually, we tightened those front ones that locked them in. But as far as the side to side, all that, that pinches in there from the body bolts. So I guess I didn't just say nothing, did I? I said I left the stuff loose, but it ain't loose, and we ain't gonna mount the other stuff, but you don't get to mount the other stuff. You just mount it when you mount the body, so I ain't really said nothing. We're gonna get it together. Maybe. Maybe. Our running board was too far in this way, and because it does pinch between the body, we had to jack up on the body and pull it out. But now we need this whole assembly to cut the rear side. I think that's about as far as she's gonna go. We get done with her, she may look like a museum car. It's like we made this old museum car more museum car than the old museum car. She sure looks a lot nicer underneath here than that old museum car. It's a lot of museum cars. It's a lot of museum cars. Drunk. Covered in drink, on the verge of going crazy, on the edge of insane. That's what doing a bunch of bolts and <laughs> paint will do to you. <laughs> Make you go insane. Show car. Or even call me by my name. Brackets, running boards, fenders, all the hip do's and doohickeys. Tighten that ready to go. We're gonna clean up our tail light housings. Uh, I do plan on cutting these down and shortening them up, but we just ain't got time uh, before the show. So we're gonna get them on anyhow. We're gonna trim down our wiring too. For tail lights, uh, we need some new carriage bolts. We may be missing a couple, but they're all missing paint anyhow. We got some letters stamped on these. They're not stamped, I guess they're cast to it or whatever. Take that off with the roll lock. Be real easy with her and clean her up with the DA. There you go. Now you're ready for some paint. There's your little hot rod bolt. Shoo! Very nice. Quality. If I ever think it. Quality museum rig. <laughs> or shim. Right here where this bolt is, that lines up uh, or pillar, I just slid that straight underneath there, guys. And by the time we pinch all this down, there's no need to worry about through bolting that or anything. Earlier, Slick barely had any torque on the front one, and I, I couldn't even pry up and pull it out. So we lock all this down. She's going to be good. Here we go. Got our painted bolts on there. Again, that's just temporary for the show. 
Every bracket's good to go, tighten down whatever. R rear tires are going down. We're about to see this thing on the ground for the first time with the new stance, new wheels and tires, and body and fenders on, and I am stinking excited. Like my heart's legit going, so I'm stinking excited. You get an elevated heart rate just from something being lowered with the right wheels and tires on it, seeing it for the first time. He may be a real car guy. <laughs> Ashley, get my blood pressure medicine. I'm about to see her on the ground, damn it. <laughs> You'd be like, your blood pressure's through the roof. What happened? You ain't seen that car yet. Yeah, come on out, come on outside, baby. Come on out to the bar and see what we're working with. Slick, would you do me the honors? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Dang, we got a hot run now, dog. Yeah. We, we knocked that parade car straight on out of here, and she's looking like a hot rod. Oh, baby. Slick, I think for the show, we're going to go no caps, no hood. Just run her oh. down like this. Oh, dude, yeah. Holy Toledo. See, it's perfect. Right? That's a good one right there. She's a gooder, folks. I hope you guys who have been enjoying this, because I know views have been down on the Model A build. People don't enjoy it for some reason, but I hope you have been following along see what we were seeing the whole time. I'm going to give it a little Mr. Miyagi, because it is a, a lot of stuff's been covered in dust and everything from working. Grinding dust, body filler dust. 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 Wax on, wax off, young Petawan. <laughs> that, that little brush, I'm telling y'all. Better get you some off the Amazon. They're handy, they're handy. Cause this thing looked terrible before. Woo, baby. All right guys, we got the headlight bar down. We're gonna pull off Bazooka Joe, AKA Mr. Uga. And then our other parade accessories. Parade and parade accessories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hank Kill. Some parade and parade accessories. The old Ugo horn here, we're going to keep this until we release a Model A shirt. And then I'm gonna autograph this and send it out to one of y'all who love the Model A, where you can have Mr. Uga Joe on your shelf. However, we're not close to releasing shirts, so please don't send us a thousand emails asking where they're at. They're not even in the works yet. 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 The car's gotta look complete first. Here's our person though. Yeah. You know what that bracket? There's a bracket there. These little Model A's are finicky, guys, because like these, there's the little brackets underneath that this got to pass through. I didn't tighten you that. Oh, so much to line up on these things. It's like how you put on your... Yeah, don't worry about it. We can line up any body you know. Paint it, on paint it. Get the hammer. Whew. That bar's a pain in the hiney. Since we're going to run no hood for the show, we're going to get our strut rods off, our little hood pop opener thingy. We're going to ditch it for now. I can tell you what the hardest thing's been so far, getting that damn headlight bar on. We spent way more time on that than it probably should have took. She ain't going slick. More full piles. Guys, for out here, I just want something to protect our opening. And this factory carburetor from our 283 don't quite cover our flange, but that's all right. Two bolts. We'll fool people on this side anyhow. Breather looks pretty good on there. I like the old school style when you get a piece of all thread. Slick's gonna get our little VIN plate back on. Getting brave, my friend. Now, I was supposed to nut certain these before uh, we made it to this point, but we're a hot rod building. Sometimes things get missed. One more. That's what we're after. Go ahead and pop all four of them in. Cover plate, 
drilled them out to a quarter inch. Got some stick on rubber off the Amazon to create a little gasket there. And this is why that was important. Where we can seal up our hole there. Little button head action, little class. Keep her classy, fellas. We're gonna put the same peeling stick on our floor here. Drill our holes. Any of our extra that overlaps, just trim her off. Uh, for being cheap stuff off the Amazon, I really like how it works or how well it's working. Womp womp womp. We ain't got enough to do the old humper, uh, but this piece should be good to go. Slip fit. Oh, the slip fits a little tighter with the rubber on there. This side's good. This side's still fighting me a little bit. Just the rubber. That's good though. That's gonna, that, that means it should seal it. Dang, it's like you built it this way or something. Dang right. You see the old smoke them in. Easy does it. And a holder for now. Yep, yep, yep. Guys, y'all see me do the master cylinder cover, seats, uh, the shifter, gas pedal, all the stuff that's in there that we made easiest, easily removables going in. None of this going, or is going in permanent. Cause this is gonna have to come back out for our trans and some wiring and stuff. Of course, you gotta get that beautiful steering wheel on there. We're pushing through, guys. Gotta get our steering uh, sorted here. Our shaft, I inserted it just like before, but our set screws, I cranked them down and it marks your middle for you there and there. I like to drill them out that way, them set screws. Instead of just pushing against that, it can actually go in there and then push against that. And it just makes me feel better. Slick did cut out of here. Uh, he had to get home, I guess it's Saturday and it is close to five o'clock-ish because that's when he was supposed to be home. Yep, uh, so big thanks to Slick. Uh, we would not have it to the point we have it at, which is ready to go to the show without his help this last week. All right, we got the steering shaft in some paint out in the old powder coat oven. Theo's guarding the door. Must be 21 to enter or that booty gets snipped. <laughs> Just playing. All right, guys, I think we're going to end right here. This is all I'm getting done. Uh, I do got to swap Slick's valve covers off, and I got to put our steering shaft on, which y'all seen me build. Uh, it just goes into place. Tighten down your Allens. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. You're done. So... That is it. Uh, I'm sure it needs cleaned on just a little more before the show actually, uh, but much other than that, we do not have time to even entertain getting the hood on. Uh, we gotta fabricate some little brackets and uh, for that and line up some stuff, but I kinda like this, okay? Uh, some traditional, traditional hot rod look. Uh, we kinda have that going on right now. It's kinda a little nitty gritty by having the hood off, having no caps. Now we're gonna class it up in the future by getting the hood on and running the caps. But right now, super happy with this. Uh, you can still see the car is in progress, so it ain't trying to look complete by having the hood and the caps. Uh, I'm happy. In fact, I'm beyond happy. Literally, teenage dream coming true right in front of me in my own shop. And a large part of that is thanks to you guys being here and watching the support y'all give me through the merchandise and everything just coming back time and time again and helping me spread the word of Puddin's Fab Shop. Now, if I seem like I've been stressed, it's not that I've been stressed, I just ain't been as on on the videos just cause there's a lot to do and it ain't stressed me out. I've just been focused on the work, I think more than I was focused on being a goofball. Uh, so maybe I was a little stressed. Maybe that's equivalent to being the same thing. I don't know. Either way, we've pushed through. Uh, schedule, my schedule so far, we're doing good on. 
I said by the end of Saturday, I pretty much needed to have this thing ready to go onto a trailer to go, which is where we're at. So now everything else I need to do to be ready for the show includes some maintenance on the travel off, some maintenance on the van, and then just getting everything gathered and ready to go. Uh, so we're on schedule. I'm super excited. Uh, I think, how's this work? Next Monday, that video comes out. Then, so this will be after the show, actually. This video will come out after the show actually happened already. So some of y'all has already synced this baby in person. Uh, so thank y'all for coming out and uh, seeing us there. And then, guys, I don't know what else to say. Besides, I am going to go try to spend a couple hours with my family this evening. They ain't been seeing me a whole lot this week as we've been doing the, the car show uh, shuffle uh, or whatever you call that. Scramble. Scramble. We've been scrambling. I'm on the Instagrammer. I'm on the Patreon. I'm on the Facebooker. I appreciate y'all uh, so much for being here. Uh, puddinsfabshop.com for that good quality merchandise. Uh, I'm not sure if we release stuff or not. If not, we will be soon because we're going to do our leftovers of the car show. Uh, I will see you guys next time. And uh, hold on. Let me say one other thing. Uh, I just hope some of y'all see the what I was after because it's really not that different looking other than now it's got the right stance in the steelies with the bigs and little tires that just really changed the attitude of this car it's going to be so much more drivable and yeah I hope I hope some people have seen my vision on this thing so much other than that do not forget sitting on your ass will not finish your project I'll see you guys next time